Hello there, I'm not dead and neither is this channel, and you know what else surprisingly isn't dead? The Saw franchise. But wait a minute, I thought the Saw franchise ended with Saw 3D in 2010. Well, it did, for a bit. A bit being about seven years. But if you've ever followed a horror franchise before, you know as well as I that it never really ends. And Saw was no exception, as in 2017 they came out with the eighth film in the franchise, Jigsaw. This film was commissioned after a successful pitch from writers Josh Stolberg and Peter Goldfinger. The film was directed by the Spearig brothers, Michael and Peter, who are best known for Pedestrian, a 2014 science fiction action thriller film. But where the hell do we possibly go in this new Saw film? I mean, after all, John Kramer and all his associates are presumably gone. Well, apparently John Kramer's not gone. Apparently he's alive, somehow. And five new people are gonna have to play a game. All while two detectives, Holloran and Hunt, try to solve the case. This film released a couple days before Halloween, October 27th, 2017, and unsurprisingly, because it was a Saw film, it got negative reviews. However, despite that, like most Saw films, it was a box office success, earning $104 million at the box office on a budget of $10 million. That number was significantly down from the $136 million that Saw 3D made, but its budget was also down from $17 million to 10. And with it surpassing the $100 million mark, to this point, Saw 6 was the only Saw film to not make over $100 million at the box office. So yeah, John Kramer's alive, or maybe he isn't, I don't know, all I know is people are gonna play a game, and we're gonna watch him do it right now as we look back at Jigsaw, released in 2017. So our film begins with a man named Edgar Munson being pursued into a building by a detective Keith Hunt and other police officers. Munson demands to see Detective Brad Halloran, or else five people are gonna die. Halloran arrives and Munson tells him that it's either him or them and a game's about to start. He pushes some sort of device, at which point the police immediately shoot him down, not quite killing him though. The device he pushed though starts a countdown clock in some sort of room. And in that room we see five people with buckets on their head. The buckets are chained to a wall, which lead to a bunch of saw blades. Four to five wake up, and then John Kramer's voice comes over the intercom. He's somehow alive, and he tells them that they need to give a sacrifice of blood in order to survive. The chains then begin dragging them towards the wall where the saw blades activate, and four to five cut themselves to free themselves. The fifth guy, though, wakes up a little bit too late and presumably dies. Meanwhile, Halloran and Hunt are at the hospital where Edgar Munson is still alive but in a medically induced coma. Back to our four playing a game, we learn that their names are Mitch, Anna, Ryan, and Carly. We then go to a public park where multiple people notice a man in a bucket head has been hung on a bridge. Halloran then arrives at said park to collect mortician Logan to examine the body. Logan and his partner Eleanor take the bucket head off to reveal half the guy's head is missing. They find a jigsaw piece in the guy's neck that sure enough has an audio recording. And in said audio recording, John Kramer says that I will take care of these four while you take care of the rest, which is strange because John Kramer has been dead for 10 years. Back to our four playing the game, they're in some sort of abandoned barn it seems like, and then Billy the Puppet comes out on a tricycle. Billy has a message on him that says confess, and then they start getting pulled towards more blades. While struggling with that, Anna confesses that her husband accidentally suffocated their baby, but that wasn't her fault. Mitch then notices a tape recorder on Billy, which he grabs and gives him a respite. All of a sudden, three needles come down from the roof with different labels on them. Mitch plays the tape, and the tape says that one of them used to be a shoplifter and cost someone their life, and that person has been poisoned. All the needles contain three different things. One contains the antidote, one contains a saline solution, and one contains hydrofluoric acid. The purse snatcher is revealed to be Carly, and she struggles to make a decision on which needle to take. Which, by the way, is because Carly is fucking stupid. One of the needles says 3.53, which stands for $3.53, the amount of money that she stole from the purse of the person that she accidentally caused to have a heart attack after the purse snatching. So despite clearly recognizing what the right needle is, Carly refuses to take it, and they all start being hung. In a panic, Ryan injects her with one of the needles, which causes them to fall. Actually, turns out Ryan injected her with all three of the needles, including the one with the acid, so yeah, that kills her pretty quick. Anna turns on Ryan for this, but I mean, come on, man. Carly even recognized what the right one was, and she still didn't do it. That's on her, honestly. They look at the correct needle again, and turns out there's more numbers on the bottom, which they think could be a combination to a door on the other side of the room. 
And they are correct, as it opens the door to another room in the farmhouse where there's not a lot going on. There's a door that says no exit though, so Ryan naturally tries to exit it. And guess what happens next? Yeah, he falls for the floor and his leg gets caught up in some wires. The wires then start to tighten around his leg, which really has him completely trapped in there. They then find another tape where Jigsaw says he'll be punished for breaking the rules, and he has to pull a lever to set himself free. He doesn't want to pull it though, as he's not quite sure what set free means. Meanwhile, outside the hospital where Edgar Munson is, Halloran finds the body of a blonde woman who has been killed by hydrofluoric acid. The morticians examine her and turns out there is indeed a puzzle piece on her tongue. Halloran is starting to suspect something from Eleanor though, as it seems Eleanor is kind of obsessed with the jigsaw case. Meanwhile, Ryan is still trapped and contemplating life while a door opens, which Anna and Mitch go through. They enter some sort of silo where a TV screen comes on. Ryan can also see one below him as well. The silo then traps them inside and Billy the Puppet comes up on the screen. Jigsaw says that Anna and Mitch are going to be buried alive, and in order to stop it, Ryan has to pull the lever. And now we start getting going with that buried alive thing as grain starts pouring in. Meanwhile, Halloran and Hunt have gotten the results back from that videotape, and turns out it is an exact match for John Kramer. Not only that, but the blood they found under the fingernails of one of the victims is an exact match for John Kramer's blood. Back in the silo, the grain has almost buried Anna and Mitch alive before it stops. Hooray! Oh no, just kidding, because now random weapons are falling from the sky. They beg Ryan to save them, and eventually he complies, pulling the lever, which causes the wiring to shred his leg into multiple pieces. Meanwhile, we go to a bar where Logan confronts Eleanor. Logan tells Eleanor that she's being investigated by Halloran, who doesn't believe her alibi of being at home when one of the murders was committed, and also due to her obsession with the jigsaw case. She admits to Logan that she was actually in her studio, not at home when it took place, and Logan demands to be taken there. She does take him there, and turns out her obsession is way more than he thought, as she has replicas of a whole bunch of different traps from the previous seven movies in the franchise. Well, all except one, there's this big spiral trap John Kramer used before any of his murders even became public, but there's no record of this being true. Unbeknownst to them, meanwhile, they've been followed there by Detective Hunt. He takes these pictures back to Halloran, who decides that they need to bring Logan and Eleanor in. Meanwhile, back in the barn, Anna and Mitch have wrapped up Ryan's leg and prevented him from bleeding out. Mitch then opens the hood of an old car and finds a tape with his name on it. But then his legs are wrapped up by some chain, and he's pulled up into the ceiling. So Mitch had confessed earlier that his sin was selling a kid a bike with faulty brakes, which caused him to die, although he didn't know the brakes were faulty. But turns out he did know the brakes were faulty and that kid he sold the bike to was John Kramer's nephew. <laughs> Mitch admits this, but I don't know how John could have possibly known that Mitch knew it was faulty. Did he brag about that's not That's not explained at all how John could have possibly known this. Also, that big spiral trap which we just saw in Eleanor's warehouse is revealed, and Mitch starts being slowly lowered into it. The trap is controlled by a motorcycle at the top, and at the very bottom of the spiral is a brake, which Mitch needs to press in order to survive. However, Anna gets to the top of the trap and jams the wheel of the bike, causing the spiral to stop. And hooray, she did it, Mitch is safe. Nope, just kidding, it breaks for her jam and then slices Mitch into a million tiny pieces. Meanwhile, back at the hospital, Edgar Munson is gone. Somebody took him. Hunt, meanwhile, is on the site of John Kramer's grave, which the police chief has ordered them to dig up to make sure he's actually dead. They open the coffin and John Kramer's not in there. Turns out Edgar Munson is. The police then raid Eleanor's studio, and in there they find Mitch's scrambled up body with a note on it that says, And then there were two. Hunt then goes to arrest Logan, while Halloran looks for Eleanor. Logan then convinces Hunt to let him go, however, as he tells him that the bullet that hit Edgar Munson that put him into the coma was fired by Halloran. Hunt was going to let him go anyway, though, as turns out Hunt is actually from Internal Affairs and has been investigating Halloran all along. They go to the morgue where Logan pulls the bullet out of Edgar Munson, revealing it to be 17 caliber, which must have indeed come from Halloran's gun, because he's the only one who has a 17 caliber pistol. He's, he's got a special one, while the rest of the police don't, for some reason. Logan then returns home to find Eleanor there, who tells him that she's deduced the location of the new game a barn owned by John Kramer's family. They head over there, but unbeknownst to them, they're being tailed by Halloran. Back in said barn, Anna is able to force her way through this locked door, and she finds the outside, until she's knocked out by somebody in a pig mask. 
Her and Ryan both wake up in a room with a man in a hood in the middle who reveals himself to be John Kramer. And Anna actually recognizes him. Turns out her and John used to be neighbors. John then reveals the true nature of why they're both there. First, Ryan, when he was a party and teen, caused two of his friends to swerve off the road into another driver, killing all three of them. As far as Anna goes, turns out she was actually the one who suffocated her own baby and then blamed it on her husband, which caused her husband to go insane and then commit suicide. Meanwhile, Eleanor and Logan have pulled up outside the barn with Halloran right behind them. Hunt is also now in Halloran's house where he finds jigsaw puzzle pieces cut out of skin in Halloran's freezer. Logan and Eleanor then enter the barn with Halloran behind them and they see the remnants of the game. Meanwhile, in wherever that other room is, John uncorks a shotgun and puts a single shell in there, which he tells them is the key to their freedom. Eleanor and Logan then get ambushed by Halloran. Logan's able to fight him off momentarily while Eleanor escapes. Anna, meanwhile, has deduced that she needs to fucking murder Ryan in order to survive, so she grabs the shotgun and shoots, which backfires and shoots her directly in the face, killing her. Ryan then finds that inside the shotgun shell were two keys, which would have unlocked the ankle locks on their foot. It really was the key to their freedom. And now Anna's already dead, and Ryan's fucked. Halloran, meanwhile, while pursuing Logan, gets drugged in his back. He passes out, and him and Logan both wake up in a room with collars around their necks. They aren't just any collars, though. They're laser cutter collars. Oh, Christ. John Kramer then comes over to Intercom and tells them to confess their sins, or else they get lasered. There's two buttons in front of them, and they have to choose which one of them goes first. Halloran offers to go first, but he instead pushes Logan's button, and he has to go first. Logan then reveals that he was the nurse that accidentally fucked up John Kramer's x-rays, which caused John to not discover his brain cancer until it was too late. I guess this wasn't good enough for John, though, because the lasers cut him anyway, killing him. Halloran confesses to multiple things, just overall being a terrible cop who convicted innocent people and let criminals go, and his lasers end up not killing him. They stop. He looks up and notices the marks that the lasers made on the ceiling, but then he looks to the other side of the ceiling and doesn't see any marks from Logan's lasers. And well, that's because Logan's not really dead. His laser cutter was just lights, and all the blood is just from blood packs on the cutter. So what the fuck's going on? Well, get ready, because it's a lot. So it turns out the whole game we saw with Mitch, Carly, Ryan, and Anna actually took place 10 years earlier, back when John Kramer was still alive. That means in a sense this movie is both a sequel and a prequel because those events actually took place before the events of even Saw 1, which is kind of a mindfuck. But hold on, it gets crazier. Remember that fifth guy in the bucket head who got sliced up? Yeah, it turns out that was actually Logan. John put him there because he really did fuck up John's x-rays. John, however, decided to give Logan a second chance and recruited him as an apprentice. But if all this took place 10 years earlier, then how the hell did they find three bodies recently? Well, that's because Logan ran an identical game with three new people to replicate the deaths. And in addition to planting them around town, he also planted those jigsaw pieces in Halloran's freezer to frame him. But why frame Halloran then? Well, that's because Halloran, some years earlier, let Edgar Munson go free, and Edgar Munson, turns out, was the man who killed Logan's wife. And now Halloran will be framed for the crime since Eleanor is Logan's alibi and she didn't see any of this, instead flagging down Hunt outside the barn. And finally, Logan says that Halloran will pay for breaking the rules, so he activates his collar, which slices his head into multiple pieces in some of the worst CGI I have ever seen in my entire life. Logan then says he speaks for the dead and closes the door, presumably to go tell the detectives that Halloran did all this, even though Halloran is dead and he's the one covered in blood, and how is he gonna explain Halloran's head being in a million tiny pieces if Halloran was the perpetrator? It really doesn't make any fucking sense, to be honest with you. <laughs>
And that pretty much summarizes this movie. A lot of the shit in this, really, when you think about it, didn't make any fucking sense. And now on top of that, we have to rank this on our Saw Big Board. So this one's kind of a struggle for me. It's definitely not gonna go in the upper echelons. I don't think it was the worst movie in the franchise, but storyline-wise, it kind of was, because there's so many plot holes and a lot of this shit didn't make any fucking sense. Some of the traps were cool though, especially the spiral trap. I liked that, but ultimately this movie was just like, kind of like really, you know, you, you take a break for seven years and you come back and this is what you come up with. This is, this is the best you had. Okay, man, I guess. The acting was somewhat decent, I guess, so I guess I'll put this seventh ahead of Saw 5. That's it though, I mean, this is not really anything to call home about at all so here's our new saw rankings uh saw one number one saw two number two saw three number three saw six number four saw four number five saw 3d number six jigsaw number seven and saw five number eight so i did like the one twist in this of this being both a sequel and a prequel that was pretty cool honestly I just wish everything else was better executed. Because again, seriously, how did Logan get away with it then? Like, he killed Halloran. Were they are they just gonna not find Halloran's body? Like what what and he's covered in blood. What what was he gonna tell them? That he killed Halloran in self-defense, but oh no, you can't you can't see the body. He's just I lost it. It's it's over there. Like, if they were to find the body and see his head split into multiple pieces by a fucking, you know, laser cutter, then they're obviously not going to suspect it was him, because why would he put himself in his own game? Like, it makes no sense. <laughs> it doesn't It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. How would Logan possibly get away with this? It's like, he, he's so smug at the end, like, oh, it's the perfect crime. Not really, you fucking moron. Like, how, how is it the perfect crime? Like, they're they're gonna if they even see the body, they're clearly gonna get you for this. Like, I, I don't think this is ever followed up on in other films. I, I'm genuinely curious on what he would have told them. I wish we would have known because, I, I, I can't see a logical way he gets out of this. Like, all he had to do was not kill him. If he had not killed Halran and then just turned him over, then then everything works. You know, you have him set up and all that. But all that is negated by you murdering him. <laughs> Everything, your whole master plan is negated by killing him. You have nothing by killing him. Especially by killing him the way that you did. If you had just shot him in the head, then you could have said it was self-defense and Eleanor's alibi would have protected you. But you laser cuttered him. <laughs> like... You can't laser cut somebody in self-defense, my guy. That's not how that fucking works. Now, to be fair, Logan did have tape of Halloran's confession, but that's still not enough. Like, sure, he confessed that shit on tape, but he's dead. You laser cuttered him. <laughs> They're gonna find the body. Like... It doesn't matter if he confessed at this point, you're not getting out of this clean. It's fucking ridiculous. So during that, I said this wasn't followed up on, which might have caused you to say, Oh boy, that means there's no more Saw movies, right? Sadly, no. There was another one in 2021 called Spiral, starring Chris Rock for some reason. So yeah, we'll get to that at some point. But yeah, in conclusion, this was pretty bad and definitely, you know, not worth reviving the franchise for, if I'm being perfectly honest. But maybe Spiral will be better. Or maybe it'll be worse. I guess we'll see. But we're not going to see anytime soon. Or well, maybe we will, actually, because it's on request. Maybe we'll see next month, actually. We might actually see it sometime soon. Not next week, though, as next week we're going to return to the Chucky franchise and look at Child's Play 3, which is also a movie I don't like. But anyway, that is it for me today. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you again to Blade for using your Twitch points to request this. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. If you didn't like it, well, I didn't like the movie either, brother, but be kind. You know, I try my best. <laughs> but, yep, next week we'll be doing Child's Play 3. Uh, thank you guys again for watching, and thank you to all my patrons who are named in the video description for supporting me and my channels. For all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my look back at Jigsaw, released in 2017, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.